fabulous things that she's going to present to you today, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. She's featured prominently at American Monuments. She is a knit bomber. I was telling my students about her. I said, you know what? I have a new way to do graffiti for you guys. I said, I know y'all don't tag. None of my students would ever tag anything. But this is an awesome way to, uh, to do that. So we were talking about her, and they thought it was really awesome. So please help me welcome Magda Sayeg. Uh, first of all, I want to say I am thrilled to be here. I am uh, honored and even humbled. Uh, I read somewhere recently that success is when your work is, simulates discussion amongst interesting people, and being here today, I think uh, I feel that way, so thank you. Um, I... My, my speech today, my presentation, is really about the last 10 years of my life, and there's a little bit of luck, a little bit of magic, a lot of passion, a ton of devotion, um, and a really good story to tell, so I hope you really enjoy it. Um, I can't draw or like to save my life. That's what's kind of funny, standing here amongst all of you people. I think my kids probably make me draw just to make fun of me. Probably taught them about six cents of humor. Anyway, so let me get to the fun stuff. Uh, so, 10 years ago, I had this selfish pursuit, this sort of unambitious idea of putting some knitting in my store. I had a clothing shop then, and uh, I had no idea of the broader implications. I had no idea that it was going to be the game changer in my life. Uh, but that little piece that I call the alpha piece is what started it all. And from that point, I, you know, basically what happened is I put this, this knitting on the store handle and people sort of reacted uh, in a really curious and interesting way. To me, it was even sort of seductive. I was like, wow, if they're, if they're this interested in this door handle, what would happen if I went outside of my world into the urban environment and did something with knitting or crochet. So my next piece was a piece similar to this stop sign pole. And I did this, I, I was sort of calculated in, in where I placed this knitting. I, I actually put it very close to where my store was. So I was able to gauge people's reaction even on that stop sign pole. So I saw people get out of their car and take pictures and uh, scratch their heads in front of it. And that's when I knew like that, you know, that I knew I was into this. I knew I wanted to call my friends up and see who wanted to help me out with this. I wanted to start a gang of knitters that, you know, we had our own, we had our knitting circle, but we didn't make baby blankets. You know, we went out there renegade and unsanctioned and all those tough things that happen in the graffiti world. But we had our needles, not our spray cans. Uh, and it was fun. I mean, it was. You know, the, the urban environment was our playground, and we had a blast doing it. It was everything from fire hydrants to just stuff that we'd see out on the streets, little things, uh, the shoes. and even the uh, ubiquitous dead man's shoe. We kind of thought that would be fun, too. <laughs> Everybody has their own definition or idea of what these shoes mean, like, oh, someone was murdered there. Those are the shoes of a dead man. We're like, those things need to be knitted in pink and purple and thrown over wires everywhere. <laughs> He had rainbows to everything. So um, the next thing that happened, which is probably the coolest and craziest part of, of this whole thing, is that it caught on. I mean, it caught on big. It was, um, it went so, so quickly before our eyes with the internet and the world of wide web. One article just kind of resonated with the world and then other people were asking us for um, interviews, and we were all of a sudden on the cover of things, and weird stuff like this happened. 